you are watching Adjuster TV. Hey IAs, today I want to show you how you can determine the number of repair hours that are needed on a damaged panel. Now one of the, our jobs as auto IAs is to determine, does something need replaced? And if not, can it be repaired? And if a hood, as an example, can be repaired, we have to determine how many repair hours are potentially needed on that panel. That is one of the biggest sticking points for new IAs is they struggle with, I have no clue with how many repair hours are needed, so what am I supposed to do? Well, that's what I'm gonna share with you today. Welcome back to the Auto IA Show by IA Path. At IA Path, what we help you do is pretty straightforward. You know how most new IAs are asked to meet experience requirements. Hey, you need to have three to five years of experience, right, to get a job? Well, how the heck are you supposed to do that? So at IA Path, we develop an online virtual mentorship where we help you get ready to meet those experience requirements in the next 90 days. We work with over 20 IA firms that waive the experience requirement if you graduate from our mentorship program. If you're interested, head over to iPath.com to check it out. All right, for all the best tips, tricks, and tools, head on over to Adjuster TV's YouTube channel and hit the subscribe button. While you're there, click the bell notification to be notified every time we have a new video. As I mentioned in the teaser, we're going to be talking about repair hours today. And this is some of the videos that we share with our high-end mentorship coaching students. We want to kind of pull back the curtain and just give you not even 10 minutes of the seven hours that is inside this one course that we give our students. We have a total of... I think it's seven courses that we give students when they enroll. So this is 10 minutes of it. But what I wanted to help you be able to understand is to get your head start being wrapped around this thing called repair hours. It's very ambiguous. It's very confusing for a new IA. And so if you're out there getting ready to go to work or getting ready to get your first deployment, this can be one of the hardest things to tackle. So that's why today we're going to pull back the curtain and show you how we explain to our students exactly how to deal with this issue of determining repair hours. I'm gonna go ahead and roll the film and let you enjoy. I hope it helps. Now we're getting into it. You are about to be immersed in this world of auto damage appraising. You're about to be in the thick of writing estimates. And so something you must, must, must understand is the repair operation. It's easy to replace parts. You just click a button, it's gone, it's replaced. But repair is the operation that takes the most knowledge, the most expertise, and we're gonna find out why as we go through this. So repair, this represents a corrective repair to a part to avoid replacement. This is typically associated with body fillers, such as Bondo. You know, oh, my car's got dent in it, they're gonna fill it in with Bondo and repaint it. But it can also be other methods used to correct an existing part on a car to a pre-loss condition. It also can represent any labor operation needed to get a vehicle back to pre-loss condition, such as glass cleanup. So yes, repair hours are, how many hours are you giving me to fix the fender and put Bondo on it? Yes, that, that is repair hours, but it also can be an hour to clean up the glass from a wreck. So this is any operation that we are saving something from being replaced. We're not replacing something with this, we're repairing it, okay? So as a reminder, repair operations are types of processes and labor that needs to happen to restore a vehicle back to pre-loss condition. And so here is the repair operation, repair, a little redundant there. Um, and here's how the terms and abbreviations work. RP, RPR can be repair, conventional repair, because there's something called paintless dent repair we'll get into way later in the course. And then it can also be broken down as CR, conventional repair. Um, so it's the conventional repair abbreviated. But if someone says we need to conventionally repair that hood, that means we got to repair the hood. Okay. So here's an industry statement that can get you familiar with the lingo. This bumper needs repaired. 
It doesn't need replaced. It doesn't need removed and installed. It doesn't need repainted or refinished. It needs repaired. It needs to be fixed, okay? Okay, so the cost um, to repair a part, you know, how that's figured out, how much are we going to pay to not replace that fender? It, that is calculated based on the number of hours it is predicted to take to fix. So how many hours would a guy need to work on that fender before it's painted to make it worth it for him to spend that time on it? And these hours, they're represented through whole numbers and through tenths with decimals like 0.1 or 1.2, 2.5. And these repair hours are subject to the appraiser, adjuster, shop, repair technician, and insurance company's judgment, their expertise, experience, and negotiation. This slide is a big one to swallow. So I've made an entire presentation just around understanding repair hours and uh, versus replacement hours. So it's labor hours. You're going to see that presentation, but just, just kind of wanted to mention it here. It is negotiable. Repair hours are negotiable, and there's something that actually takes skill, judgment, and expertise versus the rest of the hours we're going to be working with in the estimating software and on estimates. It, it's all predetermined by a database. So that's the big thing, but we're going to talk about that more in, a, in an upcoming presentation. So here's a real quick IA tip. So a repair can be completed faster than the hours indicated due to the skill of the technician. Just because you tell a guy, Hey, I'm going to give you an hour to repair that fender. If he goes and does it in half an hour, he still gets paid that hour. So that that that's just something to write down right there. It's not actual time. It's not like, oh, you, you get paid hourly. No, you get paid by the hour or the task that should take one hour. And there's no right repair hour number. It is subjective. So this is huge for us as IAs and especially as new IAs that we don't have to feel pressured like, ah, oh, I guess the wrong labor hours. If you guess three and it, someone else puts four or someone else even puts five, doesn't matter. It's just about being in the ballpark. We'll go into that more in detail and I'll give you some handles and some guide rails to it. So, but this is what the repair operation looks like in CCC1. So you're gonna see to the left, it has the repair operation uh, in the operation column. And then it says front bumper and grill. That's the, the header, that's the section. And then below it is the bumper cover. So we're repairing the bumper cover. And then you'll see there's nothing in the price to the right as you go to the right. And you'll see labor, two hours. So we're saying, hey, we'll give you two hours to fix that bumper. And that's what it looks like when it's in an estimating system. So what would you do? Based on what you know already, based on what we've already discussed in week one, based on what you've now learned, what would you do to this bumper cover with that scratch? What are you going to do? Are you going to replace it? Are you going to remove it and install it? What are you going to do? <laughs> you would repair the bumper cover or RPR the bumper cover. Or sometimes it's written as the number of labor hours, like two hours bumper cover. So repair the bumper cover, RPR the bumper cover. And so that's the overview of the repair operation. So this is where it gets fun. I mean, like I'm all week, so excited to do this uh, video. How do you know how many hours? Well, it comes down to four things, really. Well, where's my fingers? There it is, four things. You got experience, you got logic, you got cost. You know, that's gonna come in as we get really deep into this course. You know, is it is it more cost effective to replace the hood or to fix it? Or is it more cost effective to fix the fender or to replace it? And you'll find that sometimes that's the cost is a deciding factor. So that maybe helps you determine how many hours. It's a $200 uh, panel. It's not a huge dent. I don't think we need to replace it, but should I put 10 hours? Obviously not, I might as well just replace it. So it's just gonna help you think through things. And the other thing is asking, asking the shop, you know, asking me, asking peers, how many hours do you think this is? That's all cool. That's all cool to understand. Four things, experience, logic, cost, and asking. That's how you know how many hours. Ah, but don't worry, I'm gonna give you some handles on this thing. You know me, I'm gonna keep it simple, we're gonna get straight, give you some guide rails that you can break, but I'm gonna give you those guides so as you're walking, you're not gonna fall off the cliff. Okay, so here's the IA path, labor hour guide. So excited about this. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna make it all pretty at some point, but this is it. 
this gives you what you need to determine as a new IA to find your confidence, to find how do I start? I mean, just looking at a panel, how do I know, Chris? I'm panicking here. How many hours does this dent have? Well, listen, here's the guide, okay? So let's start with a Nick. And we'll, I have some photos for you to see what I'm talking about, but we're gonna go through this Nick, less than one inch. So this is like a scratch, barely it's nicked. You know, the door's nicked, the fender's nicked, just a little bit of paint missing, 0.5 hours repair. Okay, that's it. That, 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 that's 0.5. That's what we're going to do. A scratch. Something that's more than an inch, you know, that something that's a scratch. You wouldn't say that's just Nick. You say it's got a scratch. That's an hour. Okay. A dent. Now, man, that door's got a dent in it or that fender has a dent in it. That's going to be two hours. Okay. And then we get into the, the bigger things, the impacts. And, and this is more where your, your knowledge and expertise and seeing it over and over and over and testing it with your fists, one hour for how many fists you would need to cover the affected area of the dent. Now, this is not a perfect science, remember. We're getting in the ballpark, okay? Are you in the same stadium as me? Then you're in the ballpark, okay? This is going to be enough to get you in that ballpark. So if there is a dent, let me get myself in the camera. If there is a dent this big, right? One, two, three, four. Well, we had depth down here. Five, six, seven, eight. If there's a dent and it's all caved in and it's this long, you might be looking about an eight hour dent, right? Because it took eight fists to cover up the affected area. It's not just how far it's pushed in, it's the affected area, but how far it impacts it. So if it takes two fists, to cover up each spot, then that's a lot of hours, right? So just use your fist as your guide. And some people's fists are large, some people's fists are small, but it'll get you in the ballpark. That's the important part. So when you get to those impacts, it's one hour for every fist. So if you're interested in becoming an independent adjuster or an auto damage appraiser as a part of a diversified career, head on over to ipath.com and click the how to find work button. There is a free video course for you teaching you exactly how to become an IA and how to have a successful career. Thank you very much for watching the Auto IA Show. And until next week, keep walking your path and claiming your life.